Jaundice is the yellow discoloration of the skin that is seen when bilirubin levels go above approximately 3 mg per deciliter, but it can also be seen particularly well in the sclera. So, first of all, we need to know a little bit about bilirubin itself. Bilirubin is a breakdown product of heme and is released from red blood cells when they are destroyed. Now, bilirubin needs to get to the liver in order to be metabolized and excreted, and the way it gets there is by initially being bound by albumin and then being transported to the liver via the blood. It then gets taken up into the hepatic cells and is conjugated with glucuronic acid by the enzyme glucouronyl transferase, then secreted into the biliary system. Now, this is the distinction between conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin, the presence or absence of this glucouronic acid. Sometimes this is referred to as soluble and insoluble bilirubin. Now, direct and indirect bilirubin are often used as equivalents to conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin, but to be technically correct, direct bilirubin includes conjugated bilirubin and delta bilirubin, which is the bilirubin bound to albumin that we mentioned earlier. From there, the conjugated bilirubin is present in the biome and is secreted into the duodenum. From the duodenum, it travels through the small intestine up to the terminal ileum, where most of the bile acid is reabsorbed through the enterohepatic circulation, but conjugated bilirubin is not reabsorbed. It instead passes into the colon, where the bacteria remove the glucuronic acid that was added in the liver and forms urobilinogen, which is colorless, which is then oxidized into stercobilin, which gives feces its brown color. This is why, in cases where the common bile duct is blocked, you end up seeing pale stools. Right, for anyone who's not been bored out of their mind by that bit, we'll get into the causes of jaundice that you've probably heard split up into different categories. These are prehepatic, hepatic, or post-hepatic jaundice, which is also sometimes known as obstructive jaundice. Prehepatic jaundice will have increased levels of unconjugated bilirubin because we are talking about a problem occurring before the bilirubin gets to the liver. These are going to be causes featuring excessive hemolysis, so red blood cells being destroyed quicker than usual. Examples are hemolytic anemia, blood transfusions, and hemolytic drugs. Hepatic causes are due to either having damaged hepatocytes, which is the case in hepatitis, cirrhosis, or hepatic carcinoma. Alternatively, you have problems in conjugating or secreting bilirubin into the bile, such as in Gilbert's, Crigler Najjar, or Dubin Johnson syndromes. Post hepatic or obstructive jaundice happens because there's something stopping the flow of bile into the intestines. Usually these are extrahepatic causes leading to cholestasis, including calculus cholecystitis, carcinoma of the head of the pancreas, edema from pancreatitis, and acalculus cholecystitis. Occasionally, you can also get intrahepatic causes, such as swelling or fibrosis from cirrhosis. So how can we make a diagnosis when someone presents with jaundice? You would gather information from the history, including things like whether or not the jaundice is painful, risk factors for hepatitis, risk factors for cancer, such as maybe smoking, family history, and age. Painless jaundice is much more correlated with cancer than painful jaundice. You may even be able to feel Corvoisier's sign, which is a palpable distension of the gallbladder in the setting of painless jaundice, which implies a possible malignancy of the pancreas or gallbladder. Lab investigations would include a complete blood count, bilirubin fractionation, and liver function tests. Having a particularly elevated direct bilirubin suggests a post-hepatic or obstructive cause, especially if alkaline phosphatases are elevated more so than the transferases. If the direct bilirubin is elevated, but the alkaline phosphatase levels are normal, with increased transaminase seen, it suggests a hepatic cause. Finally, if we have indirect bilirubin elevated more so than the direct bilirubin, along with normal liver function tests, we're more likely to be looking at a prehepatic disorder. Treatment ultimately depends on the cause of the jaundice. 
you may need to treat some hemolytic conditions with blood transfusions. Cessation of hemolytic drugs or cholecystectomy may be needed in patients who have acute cholecystitis, as well as some patients needing an oncological workup.